What's up guys? So today we are going to talk about a topic generally, but also a specific example where Menno Henselmans was on the Revive Stronger podcast with Steve Hall, and he was discussing the idea of going on TRT, but also specifically competing naturally while on TRT and basically saying that this is the same thing as being natural if you're just bringing your levels up to where you used to be when you were younger and that it's it's quote unquote legal to be able to compete naturally under those circumstances and because your body doesn't care where the testosterone comes from it's the same if you have this level naturally or this level on trt so we'll play the clip here and then we'll get into it so is that you're considering so is trt something you're still considering and it's like whether you go further than just that yeah i mean i'm definitely going on trt as soon as yeah. my levels start dropping it's trt uh, for the win. But th then when I go on CRT, I'm like, okay, might as well at this point. Yeah. Um, and one one way to do it would potentially be to, like, if, if this is sort of your natural testosterone level, and with TRT, I'm probably going to make it like here. Like, if I'm going to go on CRT, I'm going to go towards the upper range, you know? Um, and then if you're, if you know that you're going to be higher in that level, so you also you, especially in your 40s, you should end up at age 42 with more muscle mass than at age 38. That's very interesting. Yeah, I've always, I don't know, I look at some of these masters, natural competitors, and I'm like, oh, maybe that'll be me. But then I have always said I, I probably would go down the TRT route as well. And it's like, oh, maybe I didn't even think about com competing then as an enhanced, like in, in the untested I arena. So I think it's perfectly viable to uh, oh, untest it. Yeah, that's another thing. Um, but on TRT, you can definitely still compete. Um, because as long as your levels are in a normal range, you're essentially natural. And if you get your levels back to, like, if you, you had this level and for whatever reason, you don't have that anymore. And on, now you go on TRT and this is your level again, then you are essentially natural for, in terms of muscular potential, because it doesn't matter if you get this testosterone from a needle or, um, your gonads, it's testosterone. It's the same. It does the same thing. Your body doesn't care w what it comes from. Now on TRT, I think you, you have more leeway. You can set it where you want it. But yeah, even if you set it at the top of the range, you could make the arguments, you know, you could have been blessed with great genetics and you would have been there naturally. So is that worse? Um, well, I'll leave that up for debate, but uh, you can definitely still compete. And it's also like technically legal because the tests, they just care about the total level, rightfully so, because that's what determines whether you have an unfair advantage. So I made a post on Instagram about this, breaking down the points that I'll go over here. I will say I was surprised by the number of DMs I got from this. Basically, not only just hating on Menno for this for this specific topic, but also just generally. It surprised me because as far as I'm aware, Menno in the, the evidence-based fitness industry seems to be esteemed individual. And I've had him on the podcast. We had a good conversation. So I was surprised to see that much as far as just on him generally. But definitely on this topic, there was a lot of hate on that. And I'll break down the four reasons why I think he's incorrect and why I think that that is really, if, if you're in an organization that is tested, that is claiming to be natural, if you're on TRT, that is not natural. So reason number one is that when you're on TRT, your levels don't fluctuate in the same way. Of course, when you take your dose, it goes up and over time it goes down. But a lot of times, especially these days, people are injecting more frequently. Sometimes people are injecting daily, sometimes two, three times a week. So if you have, let's say, 800 nanograms per deciliter of testosterone while taking TRT, you're generally going to stay at that level throughout the day. Whereas naturally, if you are naturally at 800 nanograms per deciliter, later on in the day, you might be down to 500 nanograms per deciliter. So there is not this constant fluctuation. So the area under the curve, as far as your total testosterone, is absolutely going to be higher while on TRT. Somebody mentioned in my DMs, they said, well, wouldn't that be the same though if somebody naturally had 1100 and then down to 500? Okay, but if even if that was the case, then somebody on TRT could stay at 1100 all day. And Menno even said that if he was going to bother with TRT, which he plans to do in the future, he would stay at the upper limits. And that's what most people do on, I would say most lifters do with their TRT is they stay at the very upper limits. So somebody who is natural is pretty much never going to match that. Point number two is that saying that you can compete is an even bigger error in my opinion, because that's when naturals become almost hypogonadal in many situations, right? We, we've seen case studies, many anecdotes of people whose testosterone is absolutely crushed when they compete. So it's one thing in the off season where you're already gonna have an advantage, let's say you stayed at 800 all the time or 1100 all the time, but when you're then competing against other people who are 
basically hypogonadal and you're keeping your level at 1100, that might be the difference of maybe in the off season, maybe you only hold a couple pounds more muscle, but maybe when you're competing against these people who have levels of 200 nanograms per deciliter, you could have potentially 10 pounds more muscle than they would have or that you would have if you were truly natural. And I would say that that is not a fair playing field at all. Reason number three is that generally when people are talking about their testosterone levels, they're talking about total. And I, I would venture to guess that that is what Menno was talking about in this situation. If he were to say, hey, I'd be at the upper level of the total. But when people go on TRT, their free testosterone tends to be relatively higher, meaning if they were at 800 nanograms per deciliter on TRT compared to naturally, their free testosterone would be in most cases higher than that person naturally. And free testosterone for the most part is what matters. And so in reality, even though they might say, oh, I'm still within the normal range, many people who have upper normal levels of total testosterone have above normal levels of free testosterone. So that is reason number three. I do not agree with that. Reason number four is that there's nothing stopping this person who's on TRT from just cranking it in the off season. That's one of the issues with TRT is that it becomes a slippery slope because if you are a natural and you want to take something, you more or less know that as soon as you stop taking that, you're going to lose almost all of that progress. Whereas when you're on TRT, you're never going to have a big crash. So you could blast a thousand milligrams per week of testosterone, go back to your TRT, and then you're going to maintain much more of that. And then at an extreme end, we see guys like John Meadows before he passed, like Mark Lobliner, who had a longer history of blasting. And these guys are massively, massively bigger than anybody their height competing naturally. These guys are maintaining 30, 40 pounds of muscle beyond what they could have naturally because they're still on TRT. And in, in Menno's example there, he could just go back to regular TRT doses come the day of contest and then just destroy everybody else in the truly natural competition. A fifth point, and one of the arguments that was made was that Menno said, well, you know, if you brought yourself up to the upper normal, it would be the same as if somebody just had good genetics. And that argument is a very slippery slope, okay? Because Ronnie Coleman naturally would destroy pretty much anybody else naturally and would destroy many people on gear. So I could sit here and say, well, if Ronnie could get that big naturally, then who cares if I'm using gear because then I could, I'm still not gonna be able to be as big as him. So at least it's a more even playing field. A counter argument to that, if I was just talking about gear in general, would say, well, but I'm just saying testosterone, but not these things that are not naturally in your body, like maybe Trenbolone and other things like that. The issue there is how do you then match every genetic component? There's always going to be these things that vary genetically. So you could say, well, maybe he had less myostatin. So are you going to start taking a myostatin inhibitor and then say, well, it's still basically like I'm natural because there's somebody out there who naturally would have that. And hey, you know, there's actually an angelone in the body. So I'm just going to bump up and take a, a little bit of nangelone, a myostatin inhibitor, maybe 150 milligrams per week of testosterone. Where does that stop then where you'd say, you know, are you going to get the surgery and change your insertions? Well, you know, that's still natural because somebody would have insertions like that. It, it becomes a very slippery slope. When you have natural, you're not injecting any hormones or enhanced, you are injecting hormones. It makes that delineation more clear and it's not perfect. Obviously, it is a super unfair playing field when you talk about the huge variability in genetics, but you can't just match everybody's genetics and we have to have some defining line. And right now it's a very clear line of you're injecting hormones or you're taking hormones or you're not. So I, I think that's just kind of for the time being, unless there's a better answer, that's kind of how it should be. I wanna be very clear here on two points. Number one, I'm not at all against testosterone replacement therapy. In fact, I think TRT and HRT in general can be really helpful for the right patient population. But unfortunately, we have this skewed image. I see some people, I just heard the other day, somebody said, man, there was this older guy at the gym, he was jacked, he had to be on at TRT, at least TRT. And if that's what you think TRT does, that is a skewed image from the bodybuilding world where TRT is really sports TRT or 200 plus milligrams per week, things that are not true TRT. A true TRT dose of let's say 75 to 125 milligrams per week that has you actually in the middle to upper normal range for most people is not gonna have a dramatic muscle building effect. It will, if you're hypogonadal and you go to normal, sure. But most people, if you go from let's say 300 nanograms per deciliter up to 800 nanograms per deciliter, most people report 
better well-being, maybe better sex life and libido, that they just feel better, maybe a couple pounds of muscle. I've trained plenty of people who have taken TRT and most of that is not this huge muscle growth benefit. So this idea that it just comes from a lot of these bodybuilders who are blasting things and then they go on TRT or a high, high level of TRT and then you have this skewed image. And I think that is a problem. So I'm not against TRT at all, but understand that true TRT is not magic. And I, I mean, I have patients and clients who are on TRT and you wouldn't know, like you wouldn't ever think, wow, this guy has to be on something because they're actually just taking replacement doses. And I think that you get a lot of these, like I said, a lot of skewed images. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this topic. If you think there are circumstances where somebody can be on TRT while competing in a natural organization, or if there should be a specific organization for TRT, which it would be almost impossible to implement, right? Because how do you control for all the different testing? And again, like I said, what they're doing in the off season. So it's, a, it's certainly a complicated topic. I think many people were surprised to hear Menno talk about this in that way on that podcast. I think most people would disagree with him there, not disagree with the idea of going on testosterone at some point in your life, but the idea that you can just compete naturally and it's completely fine because of those reasons. I think I laid out here why that is not the case. So comment down below, subscribe for more like this, and I will see you guys next time.